Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool Rockola jukebox repair video for you today. This is a Rockola 496 that's trying to find a record here. Let's see if it'll play it. We've been working on this bad boy. And we've got some problems with the amplifier. So we figured we would do a video repairing the ampl amplifier. So if you've got similar problems in your jukebox, hopefully this will help you. Um, I've worked on a lot of these, probably 50 of them or so, maybe a little more. And you run into the same problems on the amps usually, so we'll check them out. But uh, I've got it turned down right now because the copyright protection on YouTube is so strict, they're not going to want to let me play you a song. But I'll turn it up a little bit so you can hear what our problem is, okay? We have weak volume here. We have no volume here. We have very weak volume here and no volume here. So we got some serious issues. So I suspect that the reason we have no volume here is because the left channel is out. The reason that we have volume there but not there is because they have reversed the wires, I think, right here on the, the audio uh, connections on the speaker terminals. Um, so I think this amplifier has a dead left channel and a weak right channel is what's going on. Um, I'm going to try to test that a little bit. Well, I think I'm just going to pull the amp out and we'll start taking it apart and look at it. Uh, I'll show you what's inside of one of them and uh, what usually needs to be replaced and we'll test what we can in there and then we'll put it back together and see uh, what kind of results we get. But I'm pretty sure on the bottom the wires are reversed. There's a little, this little bad boy. These uh, terminals here are so that you can hook up extra speakers to your jukebox. So let's say you're putting in a bar, Frankie's bar. And Frankie uh, has speakers in the ceiling, and then he's also got some big woofers down under the bar or something, whatever, you know. You hook them into these terminals, and you move these terminals are the bottom speakers. So the two bottom ones, if they're all that's running, you can basically give them full power, right? Now, I'm going to look at the back of it here and try not to get electro killed. Let me show you the back. See these four uh, gold kind of spade connectors here that are doubled up? See how there's four of them? Two here on the top and then two on the bottom. Well, this top one is like the left channel and the bottom one's the right channel. See this first one says ground? See how it's doubled on the back? What that is is the black and green wire is the ground for that speaker. Okay? And then this white wire here is the audio for that speaker, or the positive for that speaker. And then the two over here are connected down on the bottom on the right. It's going to hang up here in a second. Um, so they, they have those kind of hardwired in the back to this 8 ohm connection. Okay. Someone has wired the bass speakers at the bottom to the 2 ohm connection. But I think whenever they did it, they probably reversed the wires. That's why we've got the left one working um, whenever the left channel's dead on the top. So that's what we're looking at. So you can move these and change the power, basically, that's going to the speakers. And you, then you can also add external speakers. So you can have 10 different speakers playing as long as you're smart about it. All of this is covered in the manual, though, so I'm not going to get that into it uh, because I never hook up external speakers. So let me remove the amp and let's check it out. So here is the amp. They're all pretty similar, but you will have a different model number on lots of them. So this is a 55015-A. Here's the big heat sink uh, for the transistors that sticks out of the back of the... Whoa! <laughs> that sticks out of the back of the uh, machine. I've taken the two screws loose here, of course, um, which is how that happened. There is a, a nut on each one. Um, but yours will look similar to this probably. It'll have a little bit different. But you've got bass and treble uh, switches over here. How to adjust the background music level. I guess you put a screwdriver through there. 
If the light is on, it means the speakers are overloaded. Overlord. Speaker overlord. I may be wrong. Maybe there is an overlord setting, but usually that says overload. I might be wrong about that. Uh, caution. See service manual for adjustments and connections. There is a scratch filter on these that you turn on and off. AVC that you can turn on and, or test, which it looks like is not easy to change. So they, I don't think that's broke. I think they just made it where they didn't want you to turn it on and off too much. Uh, you can set it on stereo or mono. I don't know if there's an issue where sometimes uh, if the one of the channels on the um, on the cartridge, if the wires broke or the cartridge is messed up or something, and you're only getting the left input. I don't know if you set this to mono if that would make the speakers uh, both transmit the left channel. It probably would. So that might be a good thing to do. Set it to mono if you're missing a whole side like we are. Uh, mic kit and background music input is all pretty self-explanatory. Basically, uh, they in some places you would have background music playing until somebody used the jukebox. And then they would walk up and then the jukebox would override the background music and start playing whatever song they selected. Compact disc input. The Rockola 496 was the first Rockola that allowed you to play to select uh, CDs. So it was an add-on basically to this. Uh, 10 amp lag. Okay. <laughs> Big fuses. Speaker terminal strip. That's where the wires come out to go to that little thing we were looking at in the front where the transformer is down there. And power input is literally, like it says, it's the power coming in from the uh, power supply. Okay, so with those screws off, or the bolts off, oh, if I don't break this whole thing, I've got some wires hanging me up there somewhere. Well, I don't want it to just hang on the wires. Oh, here we go got one looped there. It didn't like that. Okay, there we are. All right. This wire was looped around that transistor trying to kill me. Okay, so here, this board here is basically, it's got all of the little adjustments and stuff on it. And then you've got these two driver boards. This is typically where your problems are. You can take, these are the same. So you can take one and swap it to the other side if you're testing to see, you're trying to find out where you're where you're losing your channel you know if like the left one's missing this thing's probably dead or whichever one's left right um, but it could be as well the transistors on the heat sink so if you've got bad transistors and you swap the boards you're going to mess up both boards so what we're going to do is we're going to check the fuses first okay i'm not going to power up any of this now the, the proper way to do it is to put it under load to power it up uh, to test each component as you go through, I'm not skilled enough to do that. So the way I usually do it is I test the things that I can, like I look for transistors that are shorted, and then I pretty much uh, uh, shotgun replace the capacitors in it. Because typically, radio of this vintage, or stereo, uh, amplifier of this vintage, you're going to have a lot of bad caps. Um, so that's what we're going to be looking to do. Okay. So let me do this. I'll check the fuses and everything, give it a look over, see if I see anything that doesn't look right, and then uh, we'll pull out one of those driver boards and start looking at it and see what we can test with it. Here's the right driver board. We're just guessing that this is the right channel. I don't know. Um, so you've got some little pots here that are to adjust the bias with. There's a setup in the manual. If, by the way, if you don't have a manual for your jukebox, you're missing out. At first, I didn't want to buy one because they're always expensive. They're 30 40 bucks usually if you don't have it. And sometimes you can download them off the internet depending on the model. This 496, I cannot find a manual for or the schematics. It doesn't exist apparently. It's unobtainium. But um, a lot of times for yours, whichever one you're working on, you can download the manual or buy a manual. Even if you have to buy one, $30, $40, it's worth its weight in gold because it tells you how to do things like adjust the bias. Uh, and it tells you the part numbers and stuff. So, like, what is that transistor supposed to be, you know? And so, there's probably 30 or 40 adjustments in it that you can make, depending on what you've got going on. You might have the records not setting down right or whatever, you know. 
that uh, will it will tell you in the manual uh, how to adjust and uh, just the schematics and stuff showing how everything everything connects how the the amplifier connects and all that it's just it's worth its weight in gold if you can find one but this is what we've got we don't have the schematics so and say an NPN, an MPN transistor, and a PNP, a PNP transistor. I wonder if they say that because it's not that important what the actual trans uh, uh, transistor is, as long as it's NPN or P uh, N or PNP. MJE150. One fifty and there's more to it. I couldn't read it. So, if you get a transistor that's shorted, a lot of them are going to blow the fuse, right? I checked the fuses, none of them are blown. These four. Now, why do they have four fuses? I'm guessing, I don't know for sure, <laughs> but I'm guessing it's these four transistors, right? Or maybe it's two for the transistors, I don't know. But none of them are blown. So, these chassis mounted transistors are probably fine. I did check these three already. And the small one. And they're not shorted, so it seems like they're fine. Who knows under a under a load though. And they might be leaky. Uh, but I'm more concerned with this little board here. So you've got a couple transistors here, a couple little baby ones there, little pre-drivers or something. A few here. I see a diode or two there, and then a bunch of capacitors. You've also got this thing. What is this? MD8003. I have no clue what that is. There's the Motorola logo, though. And you see the 87 date code. So uh, this is a late 80s box. So looking on the back, one of those transistors, is, or two of them, have obviously been replaced at some point. Probably back in its days of earning that money. Let's see if there's any cold solder joints where this big huge connector connects to it. Sometimes on arcade games and pinball machines especially we get cold solder joints here. And it's always on the end usually. Those look pretty good. I don't know. Probably worth reflowing. But I think they all look pretty decent. Okay, so that doesn't look like an issue. But again, I think this might be the working board. Um, the box caps I usually don't have any trouble with. So yeah, I think I'm just going to recap it. So let's see here. I've got one, two, three, four. Huh. Four little capacitors. Um, I'll leave the ceramics, of course. And I'm going to test these transistors just with the, the diode check. Just, just make sure there's nothing that's obviously shorted. Um, and then we'll put it back in. I, another thing I like to do whenever I mess with these two, some people don't like this, but this these are the bias adjustments. All right? I like to just turn them and turn them back. Just kind of, just in case they're stuck on a spot that's it's not happy with. All right? So, uh, I'll check these, like I said, with a multimeter, replace the caps, and then we'll move on to the other one. I think the other one might be messed up or something. I want to show you something on these uh, bias pots, too. So, this is the one I just recapped. This is the one I haven't. If you look, the bias pots are set pretty much identical on them. So, it's probably like a factory thing um, now two of the caps I have changed the value of because I had to. Um, I don't know if that'll mess up our bias voltage or not though. But we have here. Yeah, all of you audiophiles are going to hate this, but look, I am not an audiophile. Clearly, I am not an audio expert. So this is a 150 microfarad the camera's acting up. Well, 150 microfarad uh, 16 volt. 
and I don't have 150s, so I put a 220. Okay, and oh no, it's an 85 degree from the factory. Oh, what were they thinking? Oh, that's so horrible. They only put the cheap cap in it from the factory. I have seen it all now. <laughs> Why would they do that? I'm trying to see if the other ones are. I don't know what the other ones are. I don't know. This don't look like a high quality cap to me. So, like I said, we shotgun replace them. There's just a few anyway. Uh, and that's kind of because we mainly deal with arcade monitors. And we work on the same, like, uh, it's, just a, it's, it's just a kind of different setup than how most people do radio repair. But... We're working on a lot of arcade monitors, and on a on a monitor, if you have bad electrolytic capacitors or ones that are just off value a little bit, you're going to get all kinds of geometric problems on the screen. So you're going to get stuff folding over. You're going to get a curl at the top of the screen. You're just going to get uh, you know a picture that's not as big. Um, so in an arcade monitor, you kind of have to replace all the electrolytic capacitors every time. So even though shotgunning them isn't the greatest thing to do because you're not really finding the problem and correcting it. You kind of, in an arcade monitor, you get away with it because that's that usually fixes most of the stuff. You just need to replace all the caps, right? And there's other stuff too, like the flybacks off that need replaced. And, you know, on arcade monitors, we can troubleshoot them pretty well because we see the same monitors over and over again. And then keep in mind too that an arcade monitor is on... So what I'm saying is if the cap is a little off, you will see it on the screen, which is kind of unacceptable on a monitor, right? So you kind of have to replace all of them. And we see the same models over and over again, and they're left on all day long for years and years and years and years. So it's just a thing. On these, the jukeboxes, it's a similar thing. They're left on constantly. They play nonstop, right? Now on home radios... A lot of people do like radio repair, and they're much more knowledgeable than I am about repairing them. So they can go find the one little part that's messed up and replace it instead of shotgunning it. But they're also dealing with something that's not on all the time, you know. So I wish I had the skill to go through and, and find the exact spot where something's not quite right, but I'm not there yet. So I've had good luck, though, on a jukebox amplifier with shotgunning the electrolytics. So that's why we're doing what we're doing. All right, so uh, another thing I'm going to do just for testing purposes is I'm going to put the one that I took out of here back in here. I'm going to swap them, all right? I've checked the transistors, and they they test identical. So they're, they're not, you know, I'm just testing them with a diode check, but I'm not getting one that's uh, a big problem, and I'm also not blowing any fuses. So we don't have a short situation that or it doesn't seem that way. And then what we'll do is whenever we power it back up, if we still have the same problem on the same channel, well, we'll know that it has nothing to do with these. If we still have the same problem, but now the channel is switched, we'll know that it's with one of these, right? So it's just a little looking ahead a little bit. So uh, I didn't find anything bad on here whenever I tested it. I tested all the transistors again with the diode test, no problems. So I'll check this one, and uh, then we'll move on to big papa here. All right, so here is the board that I was assuming was for the left side. Now, my multimeter's over here. It's on diode check. You can't see it, but you can hit. Hear it? This transistor shorted. Now, it could just be something else on the board is shorted. So we're going to pull it out, check it out of the board. Now, keep in mind, on the other one, these two had been replaced. Huh? Huh? Seems like we found something. Let me try on this one up here that's in circuit. Ain't that some crap. Alright, look what we have here. What are they calling this little bad boy? The amplifier PC assembly. Okay. Whew. Okay, so the... AVC is made like that. They just have it so you have to put a screwdriver in there to turn that on and off. Okay. So, 
Uh, yeah, this is where it gets a little dicey. My idea of just shotgunning the caps might not work on this. There's like a hundred caps. Um, okay, so the input from the uh, uh, cartridge comes in here and then immediately runs over to some of these. We've probably got everything kind of divided into twos, I would imagine. Are those just 555 timers? It says RC. Everything's upside down to me right now. 4555. Is that what it says? 4550. Let's put way too much light on the situation. 4558. Yeah, those aren't timers. 4558. Uh, I don't see anything obvious. Your volume control connected here. Here's some more RC 4558s up here. Um, hmm. And then you've got some potentiometers here. These are the kind that kind of get dead spots in them, but so it's you know base trouble, base trouble, or something like that, which I would assume these are connected to. There's also a whole bunch of modifications on the back that are probably factory. Uh, let's see, what are these connected to? So it says right. B might be balance and L. And then an extra one. <laughs> There's a test point. All right. Yeah, so I'm going to poke around a little bit, see if I find anything that's obviously messed up. And if not, we're going to try it back in uh, and see if our uh, see if our little swap in the two channels trick has uh, yielded any results. But I'm going to uh, test like the few transistors and stuff that are on here. But, you know, it's not likely to do anything because like this one... There's only one, and we're missing a channel, you know. It could even be something with the uh, with the cartridge still, you know. We don't know. But I don't see anything obvious, you know. There's nothing burnt up or obviously shorted or bad solder or anything. Everything looks pretty good. So we're going to have a flaky cap somewhere doing it, or one of these four preamps or whatever they are has a... <clears throat> the bed on us or it could be a, a it wouldn't be one of these but it could be a uh, it could well I don't think that if one of these was bad I don't think that it would completely block that channel it would just screw with the tone of it kiss me like you just did Okay, so uh, one of the channels has woken up, and it, it's much louder now, but we've still only got the one speaker. So one of the channels is still dead, and we got a problem down here on the bottom. So if, I'm going to check to see uh, if that's supposed to be on 2 ohm like it is. That might be in the wrong spot. Let's look in, I don't have the manual for this, but let's look in A manual and see where that's supposed to be. Okay, so we've got this little chart here. Uh, in the manual for a CD3000, which was a little newer than this, but it uses the System 4 in, uh, CPU. This is the System 3, which is very similar. And it uses that same uh, power setup, that, or speaker setup that we're looking at down on the bottom. And so it's, it's basically a little cheat sheet to tell you how to hook stuff up to it. And it's hard to read, but it says... Phono speakers connected to left and right, the 4 ohm terminals and ground. Power per channel, 65 watts. 
And if you were to connect to the two ohm terminals in ground, 32 watts, the one ohm terminals in ground, 15 watts, blah, 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 blah. And what they're doing is they're dividing the wattage between where you're connecting the internal speakers and where you can connect the external speakers. So 65 ohms. So like in this instance, you could have 98 nine ohms, 65 watts. You can have 98 watts outside of the box and 32 inside the box if you connect to the two ohm terminals. So that's where we're at right now, I believe. So it's not going to make the speakers work, but they should probably be on the 4 ohm since we don't have any uh, external speakers hooked up. And then uh, it shows you here that if you have it on that, uh, you can't um, hook any speakers to the 4 ohm terminals, any 4 ohm speakers to the 4 ohm terminals for external, right? But you could hook one speaker to the 4 ohm terminal. Uh, you could hook one 4 ohm speaker to the 2 ohm terminal, <laughs> blah, 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 right? So it's like a little cheat sheet. So it looks like we should be on the 4 ohm terminals. Okay, so I, I've got, I think, three speakers working, but not this one. Little Waylon Jennings for our buddy Nate that watches. Um, so here's what I did. This is not permanent. We're testing. This is not the same one as that manual I was looking at, but it kind of works the same. So, red's right. So, where it says phono apparently is where they're supposed to be. But it's 6 ohms in the manual. It's saying 4 ohms. There's also an 8 ohms, but I left it alone. <laughs> so, with the red here and the white here, you've got the one top right speaker working. So this is the left channel. I just since we, you can connect external speakers, I just connected it over onto two ohm, and both of the left speakers are working. Okay, now we can't leave it like that, but that's what's going on. So this left channel is dead or not hooked up right. So there may be maybe we got a bad wire connection somewhere, uh, and I think this speaker is probably bad, or it might just be disconnected. It's really hard to get down in there, though. There's no way to take it apart on this. So, so we've still got half of our uh, half of our amp not working. So, next piece of the puzzle, I am looking at the schematics for the the amplifier in a Rockola 490, which should be very similar. Uh, and this is where the cartridge plugs in. The middle wire there is the ground, and then you have the uh, I'm talking about J1 here. The top connection and the bottom connection are the two different um, sides of the cartridge, left and right channel. So you can see that the way the mono and stereo switch works is it is right there at the beginning, which is actually good because it can help you test the cartridge. So, you know, if you had a scenario where one wire was broke off the cartridge or something was messed up, uh, and let's say that the signal was just coming in on the left channel off of the cartridge. Well if you slid this up to mono, this switch, it's going to short the left side with the right side that you don't have, which would provide the right side. So you know what I mean? So if the wire was cut, that line would be dead, but if you put it on mono, it wouldn't matter that the line's dead. You're getting a signal on one side or the one channel or the other and it would join them both together right at the beginning. So it's if it did that all the way at the end or something like that, uh, you wouldn't be able to use it to troubleshoot very well because, uh, um, well, actually that would help us because we wouldn't have to fix one channel. <laughs> but this helps us determine that it is, in fact, not the cartridge because if I slide it on mono, we still only have, uh, we still only have uh, one channel working. So that's not it and that has eliminated the tone arm so it's something actually on the amp all right I'm back inside of it now I found something though I have went back and watched the video maybe you can go back and tell I don't know depends on how much time you have I went back and watched the video because of what I found check this out so I was telling you that there's all these mods on here uh, most of these wires are actually for this mute board over here mute relay board, whatever, that it uses to mute it. Uh, whenever it cancels the record, it mutes the amp, right? 
Okay, <clears throat> so that's what most of that is. But there are a couple other mods, like there is a resistor there, and there's a little jumper wire there, and this is probably stuff all done at the factory. There's a little cut there. They um, they just did stuff like that. Sometimes the, the silk screen wouldn't be quite right, and so they just mod every one of the boards for thousands of machines. It doesn't seem like they would do that, but they did. Okay, and then down here, let me see if I can set it up here. I'm going to break the freaking thing if I keep finagling it. Is finagle a word that we can use? So we got this little number here. <laughs> okay, this is where the... Not only does this connect to the mute board, but the plug plugs in here that connects to the two driver boards. Okay. So... Look at this little mod they've done. Basically, you've got left channel, uh, left channel, right channel, ground, right? So look at this little mod they've done. They have cut the trace and soldered a resistor to it and jumped it to the part of the trace that they cut. And then they've soldered a capacitor to that and then cut the trace again and jumped into the new, the other part of the trace. So they've made this little island in there to, to connect the resistor and the cap to. Pretty wild. Of course, it's broken loose a little bit, right? But it's still connected. However, this one, they did the same thing, except the resistor's broken loose. The resistor is not soldered to that. And guess what? That's the left channel. So the signal is broken right there. So I'm going to solder that back on. I can't tell by looking at the video if it was like that when I took it apart. But it is now. And that would kill the entire left channel. Which is what we're doing. What we've got. So I'm going to solder it back and see if I can clean it up. And f figure out how to keep that from shorting. And put it all back and then test it one more time. I looked at all the caps and everything. I can't find anything wrong with them. The, the four little... Um, these little chips here that I was calling preamps. I don't know what they are. Op amps, maybe. Um, I, I used a diode check and just tested the legs against each other. You can... Any kind of, any kind of uh, IC that has like... Uh, a, a a gate in it like a you know anything any kind of any kind of uh, IC that has a transistor relationship inside it between the pins you can check with a multimeter to look for shorts or opens you can't tell if it's working right but you can check and see if there's anything obviously wrong and I can't find anything obviously wrong with those four they all uh, measure identical to each other in circuit and uh, we know two of them are working because the right, um, the right channel is working. Uh, so hopefully that little resistor being broke loose was like that from the very beginning and that was all that was wrong with it. Because I can't find anything else wrong with it. Fixed it. That freaking resistor must have been broke the whole time. But I can't tell by the video. I just can't quite tell. Wow. So cool. I can't play any music though. YouTube. They hate me. Okay. Uh, so uh, we need to put... This speaker still isn't working though. We need to get that out and see if maybe the plug came off. Maybe we'll get lucky. Sounds great. All right, so we pulled out the speaker. Bad news, folks. The speaker's blown. If you check continuity between here, you get high, re you don't get any resistance. I mean, you get a lot of resistance, infinite resistance. Um, and if you look, the cone has completely detached from the whatever you call it. 
I believe this can be fixed, right? You people tell me down below, can this be fixed? Now, if I, if I don't have, like this is open. This is no longer connected. But if you look, it's still connected to the paper down there. I figured that that would still be connected. That you'd get your 8 ohms, like the other one. Um, and then it would just need the cone glued back on. But apparently that is not the case. So it could be that the cone's messed up and something else is messed up. I don't know. I don't know. Though. You let me know what you think down below. But you know what we did? We put another one in it. We had uh, we have some brand new ones that we put in them if they need it. So we put in another one. Everything's cool. Same size. Everything's cool. Um, and uh, all four speakers are now working. Wow. So I'm going to see if I can find one of my uh, records that YouTube allows us to play. And then I'll slide it in there and uh, we'll finish up. Um, but uh, basically just looking at connections inside and replaced the caps on the driver boards and it brought that one channel back but to be honest I don't know if the caps did it or if it just was a bad connection or something but we got it up and running all right folks we've been cleaning it up a little bit this is the uh, David Rockola signature model which I think they all were so it's not like it's valuable or anything it's no more valuable than just a nice clean cool Rockola jukebox so cool. So I'm going to play you a song that I believe will defeat YouTube's uh, uh, copyright system. Huh, we'll see. We'll see. If it plays the wrong song, or if it just disappears, then you know that something happened, okay? So I'll, I'll do my little spiel, and then I'll play the song, and then if I have to cut it off, I'll cut it off. So uh, we hope you enjoyed the video. We replaced the speaker. Everything's cool. Everything's looking good. Uh, if you're working on your amp, don't be afraid to get in there and check it out. That's what you're kind of looking at. That's kind of how we go past them. But really, there wasn't much wrong with it that I could tell. Uh, we're trying to learn more about them as we go along. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. And you know how you can support our channel? Go to Amazon. Uh, if you're going to Amazon, go to Amazon through one of our links down below on the video. Um, down in the description of the video, we have some links to Amazon for different countries. It basically just uh, gives us a tip for sending you to Amazon. So if you decide that you're going to buy anything online, don't ever type Amazon.com. Use one of our links, and then we get money. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. We like to be uh, very upfront about that, right? Uh, and finally, last but not least, don't forget to check out my brother, Donnie. My brother has his own channel here on YouTube uh, where we do arcade games, jukeboxes, pinball machines. And uh, my brother, Donnie, does vehicles old buildings, things like that. We're over there with him a lot, having a good time. So, let's see what I can do here. Play a little song to uh, send you home. <laughs> Hopefully YouTube will allow it. Now, this is old-fashioned to, to defeat the copyright strike, but you can see that all four speakers are working. Time to hit the house.